Hey, what's up, guys? We're back again with a new meta Royal Giant tech that all the top pros in Clash Royale are playing to get favorable matchups on ladder and dominate all the annoying decks. Graveyard and Goblin Hut are absolutely everywhere, and if you match into them, this deck should always win. Mother Witch turns your opponent's spawning spam against them, so you have a powerful parade of piggies pushing at your opponent. Royal Ghost can float over the river to wreck Goblin Huts and other buildings while arrows come up clutch to remove big cards instantly. And if you're tired of losing to tank players that always go all in, you're going to be shredding Electro Giants, Golems, and any big beatdown push with the giant skeleton to make all of their pushes go kaboom, the fishermen to activate king tower, and the zappies to stun their stuff. And after you defend with your units, they're always going to be useful too. Fisherman pulls units off of your royal giant so you can get extra damage. Zappies reset mighty miners and furner dragons and stop other units from attacking so your royal giant can live longer. And if you have a giant skeleton in front of your royal giant, your opponents have to deal with that first, which feels like the worst when their units get blown back. Let's jump into some games with this new explosive strategy and assert dominance. Lots of love to everyone that's using Crate Code Sir Tide to support the channel. Yo, we got a game here. So this guy's gonna have some hearts in his name and we're ready to be heartless. So we've got a Royal Giant Giant Skeleton deck. The Giant Skeleton's gonna be able to protect our Royal Giant pretty effectively. And the best thing for us to see is have Mother Witch in our hand and seize his skeletons. So this is really cool because we have an influx of piggies. Our piggy farm has just started. It is not gonna be stopping anytime soon. Oh no, it is gonna stop. He put the end to it. He's so mean. Dropping the Skeleton King like that. All right, so we're gonna go in for a Rail Ghost. I think that's gonna be A-OK -okay for us. Definitely going to end up losing a bunch of our cards here, and he's gonna go in for a Graveyard, so he's spectacularly aggressive. Good for us, though, because we've got Goblins. If you guys are ever scared of your opponent going in for a Baby Dragon at the river, you can just make sure that you, you go and defend with your Zappies or your Giant Skeleton or even your Royal Giant if you really need to. Okay, so I wanna apply pressure so we can force out the Tombstone. Because if you think about it, the dude has to go in for Tombstone against the Giant Skeleton to distract it. So then, if he does that, then we go Mother Witch. And then he's gonna probably go Barbro, but then he's got a Barbro on top of the Zappies, but he's not gonna be able to because he has to Barbro on top of the Mother Witch. Oh, he's gonna Skeleton King instead! Yo, I think that's how you wind up dead. I don't think, I don't think you're defending this anymore, man. That's another Piggy, and the Giant Skeleton's gonna stay alive, and it should be able to lock onto the tower if I'm not unlucky. Please, please just explode. Oh, it hit the Ice Wizard! <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that wasn't really the explosion that I was expecting, but that's a pretty good explosion that I'll take, you know, as I'll take the tower. Very solid stuff. Easy wins with this deck against Graveyard, as you guys can see. Even if it's not using the Mother Witch, particularly on defense every single time, you're going to be fine because you can just use the Mother Witch on offense when the Giant Skeleton baits out your opponent's counters. Also, I didn't even mean to make that prediction, but... I guess we stopped the baby dragon from crossing the river. So then the graveyard was getting targeted by our princess tower. So he's just dead. He's barely even tickled by tower with an entire graveyard and baby dragon. And all he can do is laugh. Well, somehow we shredded 3000 damage in his left hand tower too. And he's still laughing. Probably one of the most fun matches I've played in a while, but by far my favorite moment is when we sent his Ice Wizard straight from his hand back into the graveyard. The bomb surprise gave our opponent a quick demise, and we're starting off strong, pushing up to 7,000 in the world. It's time to keep up the climb, and this guy's got a Skeleton Barrel in his banner, so hopefully he storms through with them. Well, that's also kind of cool. I love playing Mother Witch in this meta. Everyone has that stinky Goblin Hut. So, we're going to go and turn those Spear Goblins on our team, and I don't think our opponent wants that. So this graveyard deck is something that you'll see nine times out of ten when you're playing Clash Royale. It's just like literally one of the most popular decks in Clash Royale right now. So if we're able to go goblins here and then activate King Tower, that'd be really, really cool. Let's see if this works out. I'm going to go and pull the Skeleton King. Maybe he clicks the ability. I don't know what he's going to do. We just want to activate King Tower because <laughs> fight against graveyard and you're able to do that. You're just in a huge lead. This guy's going to be extremely angry now. I want to see what he does because generally they'll go goblin hunt when you go royal giant. And then if they don't have anything besides Goblin Hut, then they give you free Mother Witch Piggies. So if you have Poison, guess what? Poison doesn't do so well against Mother Witch because it takes so long to kill it. Oh my gosh, how many Piggies am I about to get out here? No way, dude. <laughs> We're still keeping the Mother Witch alive. This is such a meme at this moment. Holy heck. Okay, cool. So that's going to be two shots on top of the egg so it doesn't even resurrect. And we're forcing out even more elixir from him. The best thing about this is the fact that we activated King Tower. So if you didn't know, that's like another way of winning against all these graveyard players. I'm not going to make you guys watch the rest of this. We've already won. You guys saw what happened with the last graveyard player. Yo, he's going to let the giant skeleton connect. <laughs> you know, the only difference between this match and the last one... The fact that we activated King Tower made it even easier. One HP has always got left, too. That's such a meme. Oh, it's not even going to stay alive. 
Oh, I feel really toxic playing this deck, but I feel like all the Goblin Hut players deserve it. This guy even dipped out. Gotta love smashing the Goblin Huts. That's a clean three piece. And we steadily made our way up to 5,700 in the world. We got a game against Shadow and he's gonna bring us into the darkness with his clan. So I'm excited to see what he's up to. I'm just gonna go Goblins at the start. Pretty safe play. Archer Queen, okay, cool. So it's probably not gonna be a graveyard deck. Most graveyard decks are running Skeleton King with Goblin Hut. And Archer Queen is off limits if that's gonna be the case. So he's probably gonna have like a Rail Hogs or Hogwarter Earthquake deck, which counters all of those matchups where you're playing against Goblin Hut. So I like his deck already seen one card. <laughs> you know, I'm just assuming, I'm just assuming. I'm gonna go in for a Rail Giant here and then I can follow through with the Mother Witch just because we see Goblins and Ice Spirit. He's probably gonna have like a Cannon and then also like Earthquake. So it's looking like the exact same deck. Oh my gosh, the Rail Giant got pushed. Rail Tide got pushed to the left. Oh, that's magical value for me. That is already a monumentous lead. So I think I can go in for like the Rail Ghost plus arrows potentially. I don't know. I'm hoping he drops something to counter the Rail Ghost like near his tower so then I can arrows on that and then also hit the cannon. And then, oh, wait, wait, wait. You know, we're going to force out the Arch Queen ability? Nah. Oh, I wish he was just a little bit worse at the game. And he wouldn't identify that the Archer Queen wasn't going to die. Because now he's going to bait out like ugh, two Elixir from my Goblins. He's going to get a hit on my tower too. Doesn't feel right, you know? One elixir ability from champions hit different out here. We're gonna go for Giant Skeleton again. And generally, the way that you wanna play this matchup is just activate King Tower with our Hog Rider using your Fisherman, and then use your Fisherman on defense for the rest of the time. And, oh, okay. Uh, I guess I can still use a Fisherman and activate King Tower. It ain't that bad for us to do that. As long as it doesn't pull, okay, it's pulling the, the low health pig. Finally pulls the high health pig, so we do activate King Tower there. And then the Fisherman still goes to the left-hand side so we can build a big push. He delayed my stuff for a long period of time, allowing me to build up even more elixirs. So the fact that the piggies didn't die for a while was actually kind of good for me, if you think about it that way. And if he goes in for goblins, we're going to go ghost. If he goes for delivery, well, that's going to be a bit annoying, but I'm pretty sure the fisherman is able to lock onto the cannon. How did he get back to two cannons that quick? Wow. Seriously? Well played. I am impressed by that. But still, the royal ghost is going to force out elixir that you don't want to spend, and it's probably going to hit your tower for some nice damage. That's why royal ghost is one of the MVPs in this deck. Just because, like, Dark Prince, it's visible, right? You, you know that the Dark Prince is going to die to the tower. Rail Ghost, even if it's at 1 HP, which it often will be, it will walk into the tower and deliver some damage or give you good positive Elixir trades. So we're going to go in for a Fisherman here, try to pull the uh, Archer Queen a bit earlier and get that away, and then we can go in for Zappy so we can have split lane pressure if we want. Generally, with this type of matchup, our best bet is that you always follow through with the Rail Giant and the Giant Skeleton in the same pair. And then we can go in for like a Royal Ghost afterward. Uh, I'm gonna go Goblin's right hand side. So we can force out some extra Elixir there. I'm not gonna build up a huge push here. Just gonna go in for a Mother Witch and see if we can force out another cannon. Nice! That's exactly what we wanted. Because if the cannon's out of cycle, we can plop down a Royal Giant at the river now. So I'm gonna go Royal Ghost. I'm gonna cycle a Giant Skeleton. And then I'm gonna go in for a uh, Royal Giant because he's not gonna be back to the right card cycle. He doesn't have an Archer Queen on the field, so he doesn't have the three card cycle. So. I think this is pretty good for me. I can also go in for a Fisherman, so then we can go and pull onto uh, the Cannon, so we can get a little bit of a better trade if he gets back to it like he does. I'm gonna go for Arrows. He's gonna log, so I can go for Goblins maybe, but the best thing about the Fisherman is it goes and pulls all of your opponent's units that are on top of the Rail Giant away from the Rail Giant. Oh, the Giant Skeleton's on the tower too. Dude, I wasn't even looking at you, big guy. I wasn't even looking at you. You wanted my attention, okay. You got my attention. You took the tower from me. You won me the game. And you are probably the MVP in my heart. Not the Royal Giant. Not the Fisherman that I was giving so much recognition. You Giant Skeleton. You're my hero. That Bomb Blast brought Shadow into the darkness real fast. This Royal Giant deck is wrecking today, allowing us to rush up the ranks to 4,000 in the world. Ayo, hey, we got another one against a top 353 player in the world. This guy is going to be really good at the game. So, we're going for goblins and see what's cooking. Definitely don't want to be playing too aggressive with our deck. But goblins are only two elixir invested, and you figure out what your opponent's deck is by, you know, forcing a response. So, you get to see if they're running Snowball, and you're like, oh, probably a Balloon deck. You see Barbro and Bomber, you're like, probably Electro Giant or Golem. Yeah, definitely going to be an Electro Giant deck because we see a, a Golden Boy, and Golden Boy doesn't work in Golem near as often as uh, you would think. So, we're going to get a lot of elixir from our dude. I think I can go in for probably... Just a fisherman to go and stop his golden eye. I think that's going to be our best bet. It's going to be a positive elixir trade. And then I still end up having a decent defense with giant skeleton and zappies on the other side. So it's not like he's going to randomly drop an electro giant at the river, right? I mean, he could into the zappies. It would be pretty funny, but I think he will. So 
we are going to go in for a giant scout from the back in the right hand side if he decides to go and build up a big push obviously it explodes and it destroys all their supportive cards so yeah he's not going to drop it at the river he's going to drop it in the back as expected and he realizes that my zappies and my fishermen are out of cycle so he's trying to take advantage of that the fun thing that you can do with this deck is you can force out the barbro with the goblins and then you can force out their their tornado with the royal ghost and it's just like not something that they want to do so i'm going to try to force out the tornado with the royal ghost so then he doesn't have anything for the zappies he'll try to activate king tower with that and then the zappies are going to stay strong right oh no he saved the tornado for the zappies such a smart sir so that's the strategy that you want to implement you want to force out the tornado with the royal ghost and they can't tornado the zappies into their electric giant so the electric giant would shock the zappies and then they would obviously be able to break through and do damage so if you apply opposite lane pressure while they're doing damage to you or trying to do damage to you you didn't even do damage to me then uh you're gonna be in a better spot than them he also used this bar Brill, and he used this bomber so he doesn't have that much splash damage to kill our goblins so i want to take the initiative right now and go royal giant and then go goblins and see if he decides to go golden knight or something of the sort if he goes in for cannon we can arrows on the bomber and then also end up hitting the cannon as well so i don't have to respond to the the bomber anymore and that's really nice because even though we didn't hit the Golden Knight, now I can concentrate all of my efforts on top of the Golden Knight on the left-hand side. So if you Electro Giants, that's totally okay. I kind of expected that to happen. I'm going to go for Zappies here, and then I can go for a Fisherman after he decides to Tornado the Zappies. Because I think he's going to Tornado the Zappies, and then the Fisherman's just going to be like, yo, I'm going to activate King Tower now. Thank you very much. So making these type of outplays allows you to win games that you wouldn't typically win against very good players. And this deck is capable of doing that, despite being this super easy Royal Giant deck. It's got outplay potential too, dude. I'm gonna go Royal Ghost here, try to snipe the cannon. The Royal Ghost levitates and goes over the river, so it allows you to lock on the cannon a bit faster. Then I'm gonna go arrows on top of the bomber and the cannon again. And then the Royal Giant locks on a tower and <laughs> delivers some juicy damage. Okay, we're gonna go in for Zappies again. I think that we are A-OK -okay if we are able to defend this. So I'm gonna go Giant Skeleton really high up, and then I'm gonna try to go in for a Fisherman in the middle. And he's probably going to tornado everything together. It's going to be a bit annoying, but I don't think the Golden Knight's going to be able to take our entire tower, right? No way, right? No shot, right? No chance, right? This is actually looking a little bit scary, guys. Not going to lie, that was not the way I wanted it to fly. Oh, 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 free. Free, 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 piggy. We take those. And then we go in for Zappies, and we just relentlessly spam at this point because he kind of gave us a, like a good opportunity to do this. If you decide to go and give us like arrows value, we are going to take it because we know that we're able to defend the rest of your units by just cycling like a, a fisherman here to go and pull your electro giant, get to go in for goblins on top of the phoenix. Even if you decide to go in for a tornado, it's going to be A-OK -okay for me. I should be able to cycle back to arrows in time. It's not like he randomly has monk in his deck. Wait, wait, is that going to do more? Is he going to finish it off? No, no, please. Oh, let's go. I was so close. I think that the zappy shocked the electro giant, so the electro giant didn't get the shock in time. I really thought I lost that one. I mean, we were playing against a top 353 player in the world. Games are never easy against players that good, and I'm glad that we won. Our outplays at the start were just enough to give us the win. Royal Giant continues to carry us all the way to 3,500 in the world. And that Electro Giant player actually got his top finish last season, so he's still a super talented sir. All right, let's get it. A real challenge. This guy finished 844 in the world, so we got to focus on this one. We're going to go Goblins immediately and just test the water, see if he's going to be running a fast cycle deck like most pro players do oh he's got something different okay i want to go royal ghost and i want to cycle to a fisherman so i can activate king tower against his uh, lumberjack it's always worth doing this because if you can the lumberjack is going to go and splash onto your tower with the rage even though the lumberjack doesn't hit it still gives you splash damage and it's nice because even though i cycled a lot of stuff to get to that counter to the lumberjack with the fisherman it was well worth it because we're still baiting out some extra elixir utilizing the fisherman and the mother witch to bait out a baby dragon so is this a graveyard deck It'd be really funny if that's going to be the case because we saw Baby Dragon. We also saw Tornado. I think it's likely not going to be. It'll probably be Golem, right? Because we saw Lumberjack. Oh, wait. Could this be Ram Rider? Oh, my goodness. It's going to be Golem or Ram Rider because we saw Lumberjack. It could also end up being Balloon. Oh, there's so many different possibilities. My brain is hurting out here. <laughs> I don't know. When you see Monk, it kind of works with everything. So that's the problem. I'm going to go for Royal Giant because we know that if he's got Inferno Dragon with Lumberjack Balloon, then he can't really... Uh... I'm going to go other side because the Electro Dragon is going to chain onto our Zappies. If he, if he ended up having Inferno Dragon, that would be a severe problem for him. So we can go in for probably a Mother Witch here on defense and just eat the Electro Dragon because it doesn't really matter. And we can go Mother Witch here. So then if he goes and postures for a Balloon, at least the Mother Witch is going to be able to defend and counter that as well. We go for really high Goblins. And then if he Tornadoes, that's okay because we can go in for a Fisherman afterward. So not that much damage. A bit annoying with the Rage, but fortunately the Baby Dragon is outside of the Rage. If only the Baby Dragon was slightly smarter. Oh, wow. I get what I wish for, I guess. That sucks. That's really not what I wanted to see. I was kind of like 
laughing at being like, ha stupid baby dragon. And it's like, dude, I'll stupefy you. I'm going to turn into Harry Potter. And he just cast a spell on your tower with some fire. That's not what we want to see at all. All right, so the guy is definitely going to have a balloon deck, if I had to guess, because we see Electro Dragon with it, right? It's not going to be Golem. It's got to be Balloon. We're going to Zappies here. Pretty nice stuff. And we can Royal Giant on the other side. One of the biggest counters in the entire meta to any Royal Giant or Beatdown deck is the Monk, because it blasts things back, and it's absurdly obnoxious. It's so not fun to play when you're in my situation, in my shoes. All right, we're Mother Witch here. And then we can maybe get some good trades with the Fisherman afterward, and then Giant Skeleton after as well, just so the Baby Dragon never locks... I just didn't want that to lock onto it. I wanted to consistently keep my Mother Witch alive because that would have given me huge positive extra trades. It's okay, but the Baby Dragon is going to give us some grief. So I could arrows on this. I don't think it's worth. I think we just roll with what we got. And then we go in for another set of Royal Giants. Spam. <laughs> this is how we play Clash Royale, guys. We unleash the hurt. We unleash the spam. Wham, bam, I bridge spam. All right, so the Royal Giant's going to put in mad work. It's all if I can defend this counter push. If I can, then I'm vibing. If I can't, then I'm dead. So can we do it or not? Nah? That's the question. I'm going to go for a super high Fisherman. So if he decides to go in for a Freeze and Tornado, he's not going to finesse me. We can go in for... Ooh, oh, maybe I have to arrow this because I think, I think that the Heal Spirit would give us a huge problem. All right, let's go for a Royal Ghost. No, nah, do we Royal Giant here and then Royal Ghost here? Probably our best bet. Just spam here so then I don't think the units that he spams is not going to have to be defended near as much. Also, if we can get the Monk out of cycle, it's kind of a vibe. We can go for a Mother Witch here. We want to keep his Elixir low so then he can't go in for a Balloon. So we're going to go for a Royal Ghost at the River. And notice how the Monk is a huge problem. I hate that thing, man. <laughs> at least we get a free Piggy. That's a vibe. The Monk will get countered by our Tower and Goblin. So I'm going to drop my Goblins a little bit later. And then I think I'm going to go for a Fisherman at the River as well. Just to consistently apply pressure. And a Royal Giant on the right-hand side. Meanwhile, the Fisherman baits out a Heal Spirit, which is not something you want to drop. He's going to freeze on defense. So maybe the Fisherman locks on a Tower. I think it does, actually. And then we can go and set up our Zappies. Or, yeah, I think I'm going to go Zappies. And then I'm going to go in for a Giant Skeleton at the River. So then he can't do anything. Like, we know the Baby Dragon's going to die. And then we go Royal Ghost. So we're always preempting our offense because he's a top 800 player. We know that he will apply a Balloon if he has enough Elixir to do so. We're making sure he doesn't have that Elixir. So this is how you win this matchup when you can't defend against Freeze Balloon. You just don't give them the option to go Freeze Balloon because they'll lose their tower first. So I'm going to go in for Zappies again afterward. If he decides to go in for Freeze, hopefully some of the Zappies survive. Didn't work out as planned. He's going to go for a Tornado as well. Let's just kill all of his stuff. We kill his units and we can get some other Witch Piggies as well. Let's Fisherman in the other side. And then if he loses the... the yeah, he's going to lose the, the Monk as well, I think. Should be able to get the Royal Giant to go through the left-hand side eventually and win the game. Notice how he's having to freeze on top of the, a Fisherman that eagerly anticipated him going in for some type of defense. And then uh, we just go in for a Royal Giant at the river and eventually walk with a win here. All I need is one more Arrows. I think I will be able to cycle back to that. So I'm just going to go in for Zappy because it does delay everything since it will be able to stun his stuff. And thankfully, we walk away with a win against a top ladder player. That's what we love to see, always being on offense and making sure that our opponent is perpetually miserable, throwing up defenses that he never wants to do. And the epitome of that was that frantic freeze on top of the Fisherman, catching us the W because we could Royal Giant right after and walk away with a win. Like, subscribe for more daily videos, and have an amazing rest of your day.